Hey everyone, this is Livia Caudel, your host for the Conscious Wealth Builders Online Summit, Creating Prosperity with Your Higher Purpose. And I've got a very special guest here with me today. This is a good friend of mine, Jason Hansra, who is a master Reiki healer, extraordinaire, conscious business owner, phenomenal human being. And it's so awesome to have you, Jason. Thanks for being on the summit. I love it. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited for today. Yes. Thanks. Oh, thank you. So we got to catch up. We hadn't talked, you know, in about a year and a half. And so we just got to get all caught up with each other. And it was just so great, you know, being in your space because you're just you you are truly a healer. I mean, you bring that loving healing vibration everywhere you go. And it's just it's always rejuvenating to the soul. And so just thank you for who you are. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Thanks for getting that. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, yeah, let's dig in. You know, I shared with you a little bit about this summit and, you know, I've brought some really amazing people on and I know that you just get these downloads from the universe. You, you know, channel these guides and you're just very accurate. I mean, you've had a lot of success with a lot of your clients. So um, before we kind of dig into more of what you do, can um, you share with us your universal wisdom of like, what the heck is happening on the planet right now? Like <laughs> people are like, oh my God, Trump is going into office. Like people are freaking out. And there's a lot of like what could feel as chaos, but I know that there's something in the spiritual realms that's happening as well. And you've got some um, insight into that. So just share like what you feel is kind of happening and how we can all navigate through these times. Yeah, I love it. Number one, uh, with the elections going on, it did surprise a lot of people. There is authentically a lot of chaos, a lot of fear, fear of the unknown coming up. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I keep telling people, just to really make sure that as we go through these times, rest, because other people's energy and the world energy can totally affect us. And sometimes we're like, why am I so tired? Like, you know? Very, very important to rest, chill out, take it easy, take care of yourself. My read on that was till about 1120. I was like, don't push for things, uh, rest. Now, another big thing, if you know about numerology, uh, we're in what's called a nine year. Two plus zero plus one plus six equals nine. There's nine years in numerology. What that means is we're in a year of completion. Now, 2016 has been a very, very, I wish to forget kind of year. It's been like help on some levels. The reason why, in terms of completion, mm. in order to move on to what's next and have like a really amazing heaven on earth style 2017, like mm. no kidding, what has to happen is all that old stuff, especially from the last nine years, needs to come to the surface to be healed and let go. Once that's done, you have a crystal clear space and with a space, you can create anything. Now. With that, expect us to go through a lot of stuff still for the rest of the year. We just went through what's called an 1111 portal. We also had one on 1010. The next major one's going to be on 1221. And what that is, is we're going through a process where we're ascending uh, to the fifth dimension, golden age, uh, age of Aquarius. Really, it's all about people and their heaven on earth. And yes, you too will have and can have if you do the work have your own personal heaven on earth where you literally manifest your highest and greatest dreams. And we'll talk about that later. It's important to be able to tap into that. So what happens is we're being flooded with light. If you've ever done a detox, what has to happen is when you do a detox, all of the crap has to come up to the surface mm. and all that stuff. So, you know, going back to, let's say why Trump, I believe he did the world a service well, you might not look like that really, but I believe he did the world a service because all of this like bigotry and misogyny and like hatred and racism, like it's all been in the background. It's been in the shadows. Yeah. And the only way to really heal something is to bring it to the forward mm. and boom. So then it can be really like it's there in the light of consciousness to be healed. Who knows what's going to happen? I really pray that he does amazing and I can say, man, Donald Trump was the best president ever yeah and that's the possibility i'm living into uh but really i believe when let's say if we did call this a darkness when darkness happens it allows people of the light to really step up so when this happened yeah i personally i was a little surprised 
I'm not attached because I do believe in what's called God's will and going with the flow and this is what is and I accept it and I make the best of the situation. Yeah. I believe life it's important to be adaptable to what is and there's a flow. God's really in control, whatever term God, universe, source. Yeah. There's a higher plan and just kind of flow with it. Uh, but for me personally, that night I remember it was a huge like call to action. I was like, I never make memes. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go make like some really positive memes because people could really use some positivity. So I hop on my computer and I created these really cool like memes. Um, you know, they got shared. They were, they, people love them. But for me, it was more of a call to action. So for a lot of, let's say, light workers, people of like conscious people, it's not terrible, but it's like it's a real wake up call. And in terms of, let's say, living your passion, if you're really passionate about something, you, you'll see it. And that's also going to be part of your mission. Like there's a problem that's out there. If you're passionate about solving that, that's a definite sign that you're, you know, that's part of your mission. And again, one thing I say don't do, don't try and solve the world's problems. Focus on you. Um, and that's a whole other topic there. Yeah, no, well, that's actually a really great topic. So let's dive into that. So, you know, yeah, I was asking you, what's like your advice or what your, uh, you know, higher self um channels through in regards to discovering one's purpose ah uh, i love it that's my favorite question I yeah because you know and just a little background you know i mean i've struggled with this you know pretty much my whole young adult life and i was sharing with you you know it was like i i really got like a sense of my purpose but i've always struggled with okay where do i focus and concentrate my energies and I still grapple with that. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm stepping more into that and I'm, you know, taking consistent actions and things are starting to manifest in, in big ways, but it's taken a long time for me to get to this space. And maybe we could cut a few years <laughs> <laughs> off of someone's journey by maybe giving them some of your insights. So, yeah, a hundred percent. So just to give you like a really quick background of, of me and my life, um, is now I'm 39 now so I could full out read books by the age of three like childhood prodigy now my parents were always very medical so they wanted me to be a doctor like if you were good you're going to be a doctor so I was groomed and even though like in high school I want I, I found my passion of writing I'm like mom I want to be a writer there's not enough money in that okay fine and I was always a mom like I always just listened like the good kid eventually I went to University of Toronto Neuroscience that's where you go if you want to be a doctor, in my opinion, anyways. So you're cutting up, cutting up all this stuff. I don't like blood and guts. Th three years into my degree, mm. not yeah, I'm not going to be a good doctor. I just I've had enough. Transfer my credits into a psychology degree because I love psychology. I love the meaning of life and why are we here. I tell my mom I want to do my master's and PhD in psychology. I want to be a professor and teach people. What does my mom say? No. There's not enough money. Now, I'll be honest, like my parents were paying for my education. I was very, very blessed with really, really great parents and, you know, it was awesome. So my mom then says, why don't you go do a degree in computers? Because computers, you like computers and they make a lot of money. So the mistake was, number one, I listened to someone outside of myself. I mm -hmm. gave away my power. So that's mistake one. And I'm going to get to how we corrected this. Yeah. And the other thing was was that I was focused and I was listening to a focus on the money. Now, don't get me wrong. I love money. Money is freedom. I yep. love being able to do what I want to do when the hell I want to do it. Yep. Like, I love that. And freedom is one of my core values. I love freedom. And I believe everyone should have the freedom to do what they want to do and it feels great to them. So fast forward, I do a whole other bachelor's degree in information technology management. God knows how long it took because I partied a lot back in the day. Well, I know I've been clean and sober for about six years now in AA, and uh, that's that. important. That really, thank you. That really taught me the importance of God's will, which I'll talk about because that's key to finding your purpose. And uh, low build, you know, moved to the states, came here, had a bunch of corporate jobs. Last job, corporate management, 80, 90 hours a week sometimes. I had like a just a total. I worked so much. I had like a total emotional breakdown. I never had one of those, but man, are they scary when you get stressed out? Saw the doctor. He's like, "Listen, dude, that's very, very normal of you. That's totally cool. Uh, however, if you go back to the same job and the same stuff, it's going to happen again. <laughs> You're going to get screwed." So at that point, I really stopped after that breakdown. And if you listen to people like Eckhart Tolle. They'll all talk about this point that you come to when you have this total breakdown, 
Like it's like you totally lose your stuff. That was my point. And at that point, it really woke me up. And I was 32. And I said, you know what? I am so miserable doing what I'm doing. I thought I was meant to be corporate. Mm. I'm, and I said at that point, and it was like the line in the sand. This was the first step. I will not spend the rest of my life miserable. I refuse to. I'm not going to work for anybody else until I figure out what my purpose and passion is. Mm. Now, I'm not telling you, please do not quit your job and say, yeah, I heard that from Jason. Don't, <laughs> don't do that, okay? Don't. If you have the means, please go for it, but yeah. really suggest doing that. This, yeah. this is my journey, my path, okay? <laughs> so with cool. that, here's, here's one of the keys, and, and you might want to write this down, is what I started doing uh, with different coaches, I've always had a coach since 2008, is I started waking up every day, going from a type A corporate, highly driven, like let's produce some results, to waking up, sleeping in, and being like, what can I do today that's gonna make me happy? And I started living inside of the question, what can I do? Because I had heard in AA, I've studied the secret, all sorts of stuff, and I know that God, universe source, I use that term very loosely, I'm spiritual, wants us to be happy, joyous and free. That's why I was like, okay, there's got to be, I know it's there. So I really started asking the question, how can I be that? What is that to me? After about six months of living inside of that question, waking up literally, just trying on new things, mm. uh, one tip, make a list of a hundred things that makes you happy and or peaceful. Mm. And one of the keys is when you make that list, we have a system in our brain, it's called the reticular activating system. Mm. And basically we get bombarded with I believe 2 billion bits of information subconsciously. However, we can only process about 4,000. So 2 mm. billion, 4,000. Mm. So when you have an intention, this is why the power of intention is so important. And intention could be like, hey, I want to find out my purpose. What is my, and put that intention out there. Again, um, something I heard, the, the, this, this study might be a little off. Um, don't quote me on this, but what I read, was people who write down their goals over a 10 year span made about nine to 10 times more money. So wow. please write down your goals. All successful people will write down their intentions. And an intention could be, I want to know what my purpose is. And yeah. have that and live that and be patient. One of the reasons entrepreneurs are not successful, it's not that we don't work hard, it's we're not patient enough. Mm. It's through. So true. Uh, totally, yeah. So, Got that? That was that Gary Vaynerchuk. I love that guy. Anyway. Yeah, I love him too. He's just so straight and in your yes. face. Oh my I god! Love it. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, back to the whole thing. So after about six months, now the universe will reveal things. I'm a huge fan of book Celestine Prophecy. Really easy spiritual read for anyone who's new to this world of spirituality. So I believe the universe gives me messages from different places and things. And eventually, I got the message that I was meant to be a healer. Now, part of the background of me was 10 years prior, I was initiated as a Reiki master. And I had studied all of these different techniques like Akashic Record, which is the records of your soul and all sorts of different stuff, studied with different masters. However, I was corporate. So my thing was, let me move up the corporate ladder. Never thought, but it was a passion of mine in the background. All of a sudden, I get the message from people, myself, Jason, you're meant to be a healer. Now, let me tell you, when I got that, I know a lot of healers and I knew a lot of healers. Son. Every single healer I knew was like broke. And I go to God. I said, God, you know, I grew up with nice things. And if you want me to be a healer, you really better hook it up because I don't want to be broke. You better hook it up. I love that. That's so great. <laughs> oh, so great, Jason. Yeah. And uh, from there, and then this is the other important part, it's, it's the path of, of faith. And actually, I'm going to step back after this and tie in why happiness. Mm. God, we're meant to be happy, joyous, and free. And when you get the message, the path of faith is, I knew my end goal. I've been training for my end goal. Like I, I knew what it was. And the path of faith will give you maybe like one, two, usually maybe three steps, but you won't see the rest. But it's up to us to take that step, take that step, take that step. And there's a real great talk by uh, Steve Harvey about making that jump. You know, you can go find that on YouTube. And it's just so important. Just go for it. So 
it really just started like, you know, you want advice how to start. It's like get a business card made up. Yeah. You know? Right away, you don't need a website, get a Facebook page. Then maybe go get a website. But it's really easy. But if you get those signs through conversations, people, and you get it, just you just go for it. And what's been magical uh, is that and one of the keys is I believe when you tune over to what kind of the universe wants for your God and worse, you really do live a life beyond your wildest dreams. And because I've been doing this, this was about five, six years ago, mm. uh, I really get to do things I never thought I would. I do make so much more than I did corporately, uh, and I will. Because when you live a life of purpose and passion, uh, and here's another key in terms of vibration, why happiness? What you vibrate at is what you're going to attract. You'll, you'll hear that from Abraham Hicks. It's like a radio dial. Yeah. And it's really in terms of our our beingness. So the more happy I am, the more I'm vibrating happy, the universe doesn't really know right or wrong, good or bad. The universe sees me and is like, oh, that guy's really happy. Oh, okay. He must like being happy. Let's give him more because we all have choice. A lot of us don't think that, um, but we actually have choice of who we get to be in the moment. But let's say when I used to be stressed or miserable, the universe is like, oh, He's stressed or miserable. Let's give him more of that because he must like that because he's choosing that. And I would literally get that. Wow. Uh, and again, that's why I give you the list of 100 things that makes you happy and peaceful. Great place to start because yeah. notice your feeling, vibration. How am I feeling? Okay. You know if you're miserable. Check in. Do one of those things. Like mm. you can smile. Something like that. Yeah. But that's how I started. Just It works out. But it starts with happiness within. And not listening to other people. Listen, be respectful of other people. But at the end of the day, we're responsible. It's up to us. Yeah. That's great. So what I'm really hearing is follow your bliss. Totally. Yeah, follow your bliss. That's like the biggest thing. It's like you can't go wrong. Like mm. even the whole writing thing. Like what's really funny is I'm writing. I'm in the process of writing my first book now. And, you know, back in the day, my mom would be like, you can't make money off writing. Or like the whole teaching thing. Like I want to be a teacher. Like I was like, oh. That's what I do now. And yeah. it's like, it's just so crazy, but we know. So yeah, maybe backtrack and look at the things you wanted to do and people are like, no, don't do that. Yeah. But yeah, totally follow your bliss. And the more you live in that bliss, the more you're attracting that. Yeah, absolutely. And would you say that, that you being in that energetic space, you're, you naturally want to take care of people and the planet and like do good, make <laughs> money. Do you naturally feel that way? Okay, that's that's awesome. I love that question. So one thing that I do teach my clients is I used to live inside the world of I'm here to save the planet. Mm. And let me tell you, uh, that's like playing God. And it's really, really, really stressful. And that's what caused, you know, my breakdown and because it was always like, oh my God. And I get into all these causes, like there's human trafficking and there's this and there's that. And it, it literally for me, I'm really sensitive and it would lead me to depression. Mm. And what I've learned that really works for me is to be very focused on myself and my mission. And if it has nothing to do with myself and my mission, it's out. Because uh, one of my favorite models, and the model for me, it's mm. from a book, Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. I love that book, yeah. Yeah, totally. And this is like the basis of everything for me. So what it says in that book, they calibrate in different vibrations. So at the bottom scale, there's like shame and guilt. Then you get into fear, uh, apathy, anger. Anger starts to get good because that's like a potency. That's like a call to action. I'm going to do something. So then you get into courage, neutrality. But eventually, it goes from zero to 1,000. At level 500, it's the level called love. And then love and above goes uh, yeah. love, joy, peace, and then enlightenment. Enlightenment's 700 to 1,000. Anyways, numbers are important. But at the level of love and beyond, your vibration is so high that you are counteracting the negativity of 2 million people. Wow. So the way that we make a difference, and when I work with my clients to make a difference, we tune into what is their purpose, what is their mission, what is the life of their dreams, make sure that they live in the highest states possible. And no, it's not always possible to be high vibration because let me tell you, when I'm going through a challenge, uh, I'm, I'm not like, oh God, I'm like, oh bro, I'll figure this out. But when I get by it, I'm like, oh my God.
because we need challenges to grow. Just like if you want that fit body, you better go work out because you ain't going to get that sit on the couch. So we need the challenges to make us stronger. And those don't always feel good, but it feels good after. Um, but basically, when we get up to that state, that's what makes a difference. So the keys for me is when you are, and I say this, uh, ruthlessly selfish with your happiness, mm. which means boundaries, making sure you're taken care of. Uh, it's a concept, I think, I don't know if it was Michael Beckwith, but serving, so many people say this, serving from overflow. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm from. Because if I'm happy, I mean, how much of a difference do I make when I'm happy? It's crazy. And my Good vibration time. hits people. It's like, oh, it's called resonance. And you, you like, you'll feel it when you're around someone who's happy. But if I'm miserable and like, oh, even though I'm like caring about the planet and doing all that, and I do care about the planet, yeah. if I'm all I ain't helping nobody. Yeah. So one, be selfish, live your life. And I know that I'm talking to the right people when I say be selfish, because oftentimes we care so much yeah. that it's to our detriment and we have to pull back. Now, yeah. the self doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to speak more into uh, the conversation. I love how you like went to God and you were like, God, I love, you know, living a life of the finer things. Like if I'm going to be a healer, I want to make money. So like there's a whole conversation of like you can't charge for being a healer or spirituality. A lot of people struggle with that. And I'm like, being broke is not spiritual either. You know, and no. it's, so I know you work with a lot of clients inside of money blockages. Um, can So can you speak more to that? Yeah. One, one huge thing uh, that a lot of people, what they don't do and what they miss, really uh, do the work on your own worth, self-love. Because when you feel worth it and when you feel like loving of self, you'll charge more. I mean, my rates when I first started were standard or low and then they went up again and then they're up again. And I can do that because I know my worth. I have a sense of worth. And because I have a sense of, of self-love, when someone says to me, like, I actually had a client the other day who was completing his contract and he kept asking me for stuff. And I know to put in boundaries with people. I've really learned that. And he asked me, he's like, hey, how come you're not doing this? How come you can't? I said, listen, we have to renegotiate. We have he's like, you should be doing it for free. You're so greedy. And he like went off on me. It's a guy I've been working with for eight months. And he's 27, doesn't have a job, and I have no judgment about it, but he doesn't know the value of money. And I simply told him, I said, listen, you know, and he said, how about you go to everyone who works and has a job, and you go tell them that they need to work for free. And there is this huge belief like spiritual people need to heal for free and, and whatever that's about. Uh, but just know as an individual, whatever conversation might be out there, it's up to the individual to shift. So if you are interested in being a healer or something, biggest thing is like worth. Uh, what really made a difference for me was an exercise when I first started was like, I demand X amount of dollars. Like when I first started, I'm like, I demand $50 per hour from the universe. And like, that's where I started six years ago. I demand, and we have to be a demand for ourselves. We can't look out there. And one thing is as pioneers and leaders, we never look out there. It's it's all here. There's a great example I love that, you know, let's say 5% of people are successful whatever they do. Yeah. And if that's 5% of people are successful, that's one in every 20. Mm -hmm. What that looks like is if you're walking one way, like that's 20 other people walking, uh, sorry, 19 other people walking the other way. You'll never mm -hmm. kind of fit in and it really takes that. That's why, again, self-worth, self-love and, um, just that belief and also working on mindset is very, very important for abundance. Probably one of the biggest things I could tell you with abundance mm. because with, with me, um, it really shifted. It took, me, it took me a while to actually shift this. I grew up with a total lack consciousness, lack mentality. I did a past life regression into my mom's womb. And it was like worried about money. It's like I, I've had money worries while I was in my mom's room. It was it's a ridiculous story. So with that, it really took something. And I had to retrain my brain. Yeah. Uh, and I did a cool set of series of courses and whatnot. And affirmations are great. There's stuff, EFT tapping. There's so many different ways. And I've worked with other healers and coaches to really get that. And my money used to go like up and down and up and down and up and down. And again, mm. I think when points that's coming, sometimes we just have to get so freaking fed up. Mm -hmm. And one, two years ago, I went, God, 
I don't give an F, like whatever it takes. I'm so sick of my money going up and down, up and down, because I make a lot, lose a lot, make a lot, lose a lot. And I was like, I'm so sick of this, like show me the answer. And then the next morning I woke up, I said, oh, these people are going to this course, you know, that I remember. I said, oh, okay, I remember that course. Let me go with them. And then that's when my journey started and I got the, you know, it's about the mindset that's so important. So affirmations, other such stuff. Uh, and it just, it takes time and again, patience. It took me two years. Now, gratefully, I'm at a point where I don't have to worry about money. Um, there's something called a financial thermostat. And it's all, again, your subconscious mind, by the way, um, is responsible, if, whatever literature you read, it's responsible for manifesting everything. And mm. unfortunately, a lot of crappy beliefs from childhood that we absorb from our parents and everything, that's the importance of healing work. And once we get to remove those and retune them, uh, our subconscious mind, and in my world, subconscious mind is actually, you learn this in yoga, is your body. What vibrates out is what you attract. Mm. And so there's all these energies and stuff in here. So that's my work is removing whatever's in here to get it out and then retuning it to have what you want. So with that, retraining the subconscious mind has basically allowed me to uh, just not have those worries anymore. Mm. And freeze will still come up, but it's like I just have this knowing that it'll work. Oh, the financial thermostat. So think of it, and again, this mindset, subconscious mind, is let's say a thermostat like air conditioning or whatever. So let's say you have it set at 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is in Celsius anymore. <laughs> so you have it set at 70 degrees. If all of a sudden it gets really, really, really cold, what will happen is the heater will kick in to bring it back up to 70. Mm. What will happen if it gets really, really hot <clears throat> and to get it down to 70? We all have this set point of like abundance. Mm. So let's say most people are like broke or barely getting by, right? That's how most people like almost a paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. If that's the thermostat, what happens when you win the lottery? Like you see this with a lot of lottery winners. Boom, all this money, like, wow, what will happen is they'll actually spend all their money on stupid stuff because their financial thermostat is set to this point. And what happens, it regulates itself. It'll actually go mm. a little down and then come up. But let's say if they go broke, you'll be able to go down, but then you'll always come here. So this is the importance of working on your inner work and your money mindset. Mm. That's works. really great. So, I, so as you're growing and building, it's kind of like, you're raising your thermostat, proving to yourself that you can do it, raising your thermostat. Yeah? Yeah, a hundred a hundred percent. And actually I just love what you said because another place where even entrepreneurs fail, because uh, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, it's that even if you had, let's say, went out and sometimes there's an internal game and an external game. So the external game is like, okay, hiring a sales force and creating the best website, finding a new location, all those are great. They're necessary, yeah. totally. However, where people go wrong is they don't do the inside work. Mm. They don't self-worth. I have what I have because I feel worthy of it. Yeah. If I want to have more, I can take action to have more, but if I want to maintain that, I have to build my internal self-worth. Because again, I have because I feel worthy of what I have, and that's why I have it. And the example I love is like a house. So for anyone who does construction, uh, let's say you have a bungalow, like a one-story house, and all of a sudden you get the idea like, I want to build a second story. Okay. Now, if you don't know anything about anything, you're going to go and you might be a do-it-yourself where you're going to go and just slap a second story on that thing there, right? However, what you're supposed to do if you know about construction, you actually can't just slap a second story up there. You have to go put in solidifying structures, uh, supporting beams, and other stuff, the internal structures, to support that new growth. Yeah. And otherwise, it's going to just crash down. And that's what happens to a lot of people. They try to take on more without building their internal structure, self-worth, self-esteem. Mm. That's why patience is so key. Uh, and it just collapses, and that can be really frustrating. Yeah. So that's why my model, I believe in slow, steady growth. My chiropractor who has a great practice uh, told this to me. She says, most entrepreneurs want to have like explosive results, like boom, and exponential results. But here's the thing. Everything I believe, there's a flow and there's a nature to it. Mm. What's, what's something that grows out of control? 
in the human body. It's mm. cancer. Do you really want cancer in your business? I hope not. Mm -mm. Slow and steady, good habits. Um, you know, I find those really, really key. That's amazing. I love that because, you know, for <laughs> so many years, I would always put it on my, like, gold list, like, a million dollars by X date. And it just never manifested. And I'm thinking, like, I'm in action. I'm doing the law of attraction visualization. I'm in action. I'm taking actions. And it's just not manifesting. Like, what's up with that? And so what you're saying really resonates with me because it was like I hadn't even experienced – you know, $10,000 a month on my own. So my belief system obviously wasn't in alignment for me to be able to attract that million dollars, even though I'm in action. And so I know there's a lot of people that grapple with that. So that's really great. Like create a number that feels like, okay, yeah, I can do that number and then grow from there. Right. Totally. That's yeah. so great that you said that too, because what a lot of people don't know in terms of manifestation is, your body, if you create a goal that's too much, like one thing I'm reliable at is two doubling income in a year to 2.5, at least mine, uh, and other people's. Yeah. Now, what people don't know is if you create a goal that's way too much for your mind, our minds are designed to keep us safe and secure, your mind and body as well actually produces an energy in it that will totally sabotage you. So that is the important. So let's say when I do a year planning with myself or someone else, I'll say, okay, in a year from now, and I'll usually keep it at about 2, 2.5. You know, that's, I mean, for me, that's solid growth. And sometimes it'll happen. If it happened faster, more power to you. That's awesome. And I like to do slower increments because I like to have my mind wrap. It's like, okay, if I'm making $1,000 more every month, okay, that's doable. It may be even 500, whatever your goal is, but put it out there and work backwards so that your mind like it's like oh okay yeah, I can do that again yeah. otherwise people don't get there's an energy what you put out is what you try and it will totally sabotage you and uh mm. and of course then you get frustrated and all like Meh, and you know yeah yeah just massive disappointment you know for so long and so now I'm like in this space of um you know viewing money as a completely different uh, world. So like conscious wealth builders, it's not wealth is just money alone. It really is a state of beingness. So it's like, I love money and go for it. Create money. Absolutely. It's energetic. It creates value in the world like that. But that's just one component of it, right? Like what you were talking about, happiness and spirituality and having your relationships work. Like that's true wealth is when you can be here in the now 100% fulfilled and satisfied in your life, just totally mm -hmm. overflowing with love. And so you're an example of that. You're just such an awesome, conscious, wealth-building individual. Aw, oh, thank you. I, I love it. Yeah, I love it. you're so welcome. So I know you've got a coaching business. You work with people from um, you know health conditions to entrepreneurs um, anything you'd like to say about your business? And then I know that you're going to give away a free gift as well. So speak about that. So people have a way to contact you for your awesome oh, services. Love it. Uh, yeah. So number one, I want to tell you about the free gift. Yeah. It's actually a guided med meditation. I personally designed how I would listen to it is the way you train your subconscious mind. The first half hour when you wake up is the best time. I actually do a meditation before I even wake up and the last half hour. So the meditation that I gave you guys, best use is the last half hour. Again, I'll train your mind. And you can use it anywhere. And it's all about tuning you into your higher self so that you can get your own answers. Because I believe that your answers are within. Yeah. Uh, so that's the free gift. Now, if you want to learn more about me, my website is www.goodvibestrategies.com. Or just simply find me on Facebook. And I look forward to connecting with you. And I just so appreciate being here. Thank you. Yeah, it's, so it's such an honor, Jason. You're just such an awesome human being. And like you said, when you're radiating at love frequency, you're impacting millions of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like you're doing such an awesome service by just being you and just putting all your love into the world. So thanks for that. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, so here's the deal. Click the link below, get your free gift. Make sure you reach out to Jason. He's awesome. I've worked with him personally, highly recommend him. And uh, we're just so grateful that you're here absorbing this knowledge. Be a part of the Facebook community. Make sure you post, uh, tell us what you think about this interview. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for being here, Jason. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate you. I love Bye. you all. Have fun.